Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to my first episode of History Taking. My name is Heba Mahdi, and I'm a member of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland in the specialty of OBGYN. And I'd like to talk about general history taking for the sake of writing a specific exam, which is the NAC OSCE examination. And of course, you could extrapolate this and apply it to whatever clinical settings that you have or whatever clinical examination that you have. I hope you like it. Um, you know, having have thank you that you are here with me today. So I'm going to start talking about how are you going to handle this eight or ten minutes interview with a patient. And usually they are standardized patients or role players. They are not real patients. You start by introduction and greeting. So you knock the door. You give the stickers to the, the examiner, then you rub your hands with the sanitizer, and then you start communication. How are you going to start the station then? So you would say, hello, my name is Dr. Maddy, and I'm your physician here today. So I addressed myself by my last name. I don't say my name is Heba or my name is Dr. Heba. I say my name is Dr. Maddy, and I'm your physician here today. Before I proceed, may I confirm your name and your age, please? So here you are showing to the examiner that you are uh, identifying your patient correctly and you make sure you are not talking to a different or a wrong patient, right? So let's start over again saying like, hello, good morning. My name is Dr. Mehdi and I'm your physician here today. Before I proceed, may I confirm your name and age, please? And the standardized patient, which is abbreviated here as SP or the role player, would respond back by saying, yes, sure, my name is this and that, and I'm 34 year old or I'm 52 or whatever his or her age. Then what are you going to respond? You would say, nice to meet you. How do you want me to call you? Or how do you want me to address you? Then here, the SP would say, well, you can call me this. Then you stick to whatever name, if she or he, prefers to be called by his first or her first name, you, you will stick to that. If they choose the family name, you will go with the family name. So whatever they will choose, you will stick to that until the end of the encounter. So again, hello, my name is Dr. Maddy and I'm your physician here today. Before I proceed, may I confirm your name and your age, please? Yeah, my name is Sarah Gordon and I'm 45 year old. Nice to meet you. How do you want me to call you? Then she will say, well, you can call me Sarah. I will stick with Sarah. Okay, Sarah, I hope you don't mind if I take my notes while talking to you. So you express your the respect to the patient by um, getting their permission to take notes while you are uh, in the examination or during the exam. Then you come to the next point after introduction. The next stop is the chief complaint. And here, you will have either a known complaint or unknown complaint. And a known complaint will be written for you. This Mrs. Sarah Gordon, who is 45 year old, she presented to you because she has this vaginal bleeding or because she has headache or Mr. Gordon, he has abdominal pain. So that's an, a known complaint. The known complaint might be known clear or known but unclear where you want to clarify or it might be unknown from the start like you are going to see mr jordan who is 45 year old so interview mr jordan or take a focused history or perform a physical examination for example here you want to clarify you want to ask more uh, from the patient about their complaint so let's uh, start talking about known clear chief complaint you go ahead and analyze and examples of the known clear chief complaint when the patient presents with any kind of pain headache, abdominal pain, chest pain, pelvic pain, knee pain, joint pain, whatever pain, that's a known clear chief complaint. Or the patient presents with a fever, so fever, headache, pain, right? Then what are you going to respond then? You're going to say, I understand that you're here today because you have headache for the last six hours. Or I understand that you are here today because you've been having tummy pain for the last two days. So if it's a non-clear chief complaint, you go straight away 
you know, right away and you say, I understand that you are here today because you have this for that. If you know the duration, you say for how long. If not, you would say, look, I understand that you're here today because you have this tummy. Tell me more about it. This is the invitation to tell you more about the her chief or his chief complaint. If they give you a chief complaint that is known but unclear, like the patient gives you a vague complaint when they say, oh, doc, I'm here because I'm not feeling well or because I'm feeling dizzy or mentioning that they have difficulty sleeping, for example. Then before you ask detailed questions, you first ask, what do you mean by that complaint? Like, could you describe this for me? Or then you ask, you start asking about the details of such a complaint. So make sure that if your chief, the chief complaint from the patient is not clear, you go and you clarify it by asking, could you describe this for me? Or what do you mean by that complaint? Now, you do your transition from the introduction to the chief complaint. So I'd like to ask you more questions so that I can have a better idea of what's going on wrong with you. That's an example of an, a transition between the introduction and the greeting portion of the history taking and the chief then very important message to all of you to take home is to listen carefully to their story so the standardized patient would usually tell you a story in more than 80 percent of cases was giving details about the first differential so listen carefully to the story while the patient finishes and do not interrupt and you could respond after they finish telling you their story by saying thank you so much for sharing this valuable information with me let me rephrase what you've told me so far and repeat the patient's story. After repeating, ask the patient, is this correct? And they will respond because they are instructed to respond by saying, yes, this is correct. If you have limited time during the station, you don't have like if it's not only um, a history taking station and you don't have enough time, don't sum up here. You could sum up at the end or even you could skip the sum, summing up of such a scenario. Uh, then you analyze the chief complaint by, I have this uh, mnemonic here, it's very uh, frequently used, like OCD and the PQRST AAA. We are going to elaborate more on, on this in order to use it as a tool to make your life easier to get. So again, let me start here by um, mentioning to you how to analyze the chief complaint by asking about the onset, the course or the progression and the duration of such a complaint. You ask, when did this start? When did this start? How did it start? So it's sudden versus gradual. Or what about the setting? What were you doing when this happened to you? And the course and progression since that pain or fever or whatever complaint started, is it was it continuous so is it there all the time you won't say to the patient continuous and intermittent you would say was it there all the time or does it come and go since it started has it been the same getting worse so it's progressive or non-progressive by asking them if it gets better so if it is it getting worse getting better or stayed the same in the case of episodic pain like episodic complaints when you have they have multiple episodes, progression is either increased in duration or increased in the frequency of the episode. So ask if there is any difference between this episode and the previous episodes in order to figure it out. So that's a very important, very, very important to know. Is it the first time for them having such a complaint or it's a recurrent complaint? Because if it's a recurrent complaint, you would ask about the last episode, all the details, when was it, how was it, and any measures done to treat it. Then you come to the last point, which is the duration. You ask for how long are you having this problem? Like for days, for minutes, for months, you know, that's very, very important to know. Then you come to the history of the of the chief complaint further by the, uh, asking about the PQRST or the triple A's. Uh, you could use other mnemonic. I find this easy to use. For example, when you analyze a complaint such as a pain, chest pain, abdominal pain, pelvic pain, knee pain, joint pain, any pain, what are you going to ask about? You start by asking about the position, which is the site or the location of the pain. You ask your patient where did it start? Then you would ask them specifically to point at the site of the pain. So they would say, like, could you exactly locate the pain? 
was with one finger could you locate the pain? Then they start pointing out at the site of the pain. Then the next step would be the questioning about the quality of the pain. So could you please describe the pain for me? Or how does it feel like? Or any other complaint you would say, could you please describe it for me? Then you ask about the radiation. Radiation, does this pain go anywhere else? So the site and the radiation. You could say, talk about the radiation here, or you could make the radiation after the P. When you start, like, where is the pain? Could you point to the pain? And does it uh, go anywhere else? So this is, you can do this, or you can go systematically following the mnemonic. Then you come to asking about the severity of the pain. And there is a very common state statement when you start saying, on a scale of 1 to 10, how will you rate your pain? With zero being having no pain at all, and one being the minimum pain, and 10 being the worst pain that you've ever had. So make sure that your patient will respond correctly, that they understand what did you say. So if you say to a patient that uh, rate the pain from one to 10, one being the minimum, 10 being the maximum, or the worst pain that you've ever had, and they start responding by telling you, I have a 11. So it means that they didn't understand what you get. So what are you going to respond then? You are going to say that, I think I was not so clear to you. I'm going to repeat like from a skill from zero to 10, zero having no pain at all, and 10 having the worst pain that you've ever had in your life. How are you going to rate your pain? Then now they got you, what are you saying? They start saying, yeah, it's a very bad pain. It's like eight out of 10, or it's a nine out of 10. It's different than when they say, like it's an intermediate pain, like I would say six or seven, or they would say like it's two to three, right? So this is the severity of the pain. Then you come to the T, which is the timing of the pain and the triggers for the pain. Asking about the timing, you would say, does it change with your time, with time? Or uh, morning versus evening, specific times of the day, specific time of the month, a specific time of the year, like cyclical pain, seasonal pain, periodic pain, pain related to the periods, pain related to the intercourse. So you time the pain with something. They have the pain when they are waking up, they're getting up from bed, they have the pain when they sleep, when they go on to sleep. And this will help you figure out what exactly, what kind of pain and what condition that you have. Then you ask about the triggers by telling what brings your pain. So what brings in your headache, what brings in your bleeding. Then the triple is when you ask about alleviating factors, like does anything make your pain, the pain better? Does anything make it worse? These are the aggravating factors or any associated symptoms with the pain, like nausea, vomiting, associated symptoms in the same system or associated symptoms in a distant system or in a nearby system and the constitutional symptoms or asking about risk factors can come under the associated symptoms. If you're asking, don't forget if you're asking about a musculoskeletal case, associated features might be uh, in this mnemonic, WRSS went. So worm, threadness, swelling, and stiffness. And don't forget to ask about neurological symptoms like weakness, numbness, and tingling. All right, so very important transition is the first transition I told you about, like transition between the greeting, introduction greeting, and the chief complaint. And here, another signposting where you have to signpost the patients that you are doing the transition between the history of the present illness and past medical history. Thank you so much. I hope this was very helpful to you. And I'm going to record further sessions and we're going to continue this. If you want to find us on Facebook, you could click OBGYN Smarter Not Harder. And here is the link for this. Thank you so much. Hope you